Now what we're going to be using with this project is epoxy resin and that leads us to our next expert guest who we have the thrill of having on today with us is J.B. Carell and J.B. is the owner of Maz Epoxy, very big name in the marine industry in epoxies. And J.B., let's talk a little bit about why we're using epoxy resin here to build up this area of the transom rather than traditional polyester resin. That, that's what Bertram used back in 1966 when they were first building the boat. You're right. Uh, the boat was built out of polyester and polyester is a great resin to build the boat out of. But it's not a great adhesive. And epoxies are excellent adhesives. Uh, epoxies have a bond strength of about 2,000 PSI where a polyester, if you were trying to glue this on here, might have a bond strength of 300 PSI. Okay, now I want to show everybody what I'm doing here. Okay, and this is my first piece of glass. Let, let me pull it back off the boat. This is a little patch of 1708 knitted by axle fiberglass and I'm actually going to use three pieces. I'm going to put the smallest portion, okay, on the outboard part of this repair. Again, I'm trying to build like a wedge, if you will, to make this area of the transom flat. So I'm going to put this down first. I'm going to put a little larger layer over top of it. And then I'll put an even larger layer over top of that, okay? And we're going to build this out. And I'm noticing, check this out, as I'm kind of wetting out the glass, JB, notice how, this is a relatively thick piece of glass, notice how it's making it transparent right away. That, that is not typical when you're talking about wetting out glass with epoxy. Why is your resin doing this? Why, why, why is this so easy to work with? Well, John, today we're working with our low viscosity resin, and the low viscosity resin isn't just thinner than most epoxy resin systems. We also use what are called air release agents or surfactants in the system to lower the surface tension so it wants to wick through the fibers and wet out the glass lower the air entrapment. Okay, now what is going on with epoxies? You usually have something called an amine blush. What is amine blush? Amine blush is from the hardeners and it's reacting with moisture in the air and leaving a film on the surface. Can look like suntan lotion on the surface when it cures up. Okay, and what's, what's the downside to amine blush? Well, it can act as almost a, a release agent. It's a contaminant. You have to remove it. How do you remove it? Well, the way to remove it is by using a Scotch-Brite pad and just some warm water, actually. Um, you don't really need to use a amine blush. Um, How'd you work that out? Well, my partner, Tony, who designed the system, uh, worked out eliminating the amine blush uh, almost 15 years ago when we started our company. And our slow, medium, and fast hardeners, none of them now have that waxy film when it sets up. So you don't have to wash and sand in between your coats. So you can save up to 40% in labor by using it. How does epoxy cure? How, how does a liquid turn into a very hard solid? Well, it works through an exothermic reaction. The chemicals create their own heat. Right. And that's how it cures. Now, with the, your resin, are you limited by how many layers? I mean, you know, if you, if you have multiple layers, there's going to be more heat. No, and, John, and we've, we've controlled the exotherm. That's called exotherm of the resin system so that it won't boil. However, you need to be careful because if it gets really warm outside, if we're working at 90 degrees and above, you're going to want to work with the slower hardener so that it doesn't get too hot and go off too quickly for you. Well, that's one of the main reasons that I really like working with your stuff is you have the ability to mix your catalyst. You can, you can kind of curtail whatever mixture you want. If you're looking for something to cure fast, you can go that way. Right. If you want to slow it down a little bit, you can add a little bit of medium to your fast cure. Right. Or if you want slow, you can go with slow, speed it up a little bit, you can add a little bit of fast. Yep. And, and typically, a lot of these epoxy companies, they have these pumps and you have to be pretty darn good at math and you have to have a really good memory. Is that like 10 to 1? Is that 5 to 1? Is that 1 to 1? Yours is really simplified. Tell us about that. It is. We've calibrated the pump so it's one pump to one pump. But it's not necessary to have the pumps as the, the ratio of the system is 2 to 1. Two parts resin to one part hardener. And as you mentioned, we can blend the hardeners but you never change that ratio. It's two parts resin, one part hardener. So you made it for a dummy like me. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. me too. Well, I've got all three layers up here. I'm gonna wet this out, 
and once this cures, we can start the process of fairing it out. But right now, what we need to do is thank JB. Thank you, man. You're welcome. And we need to hear another timeout from the people who make this show possible.